AMD revealed the 9060 XT. It's going to be launching June 5th, which is in just a couple of weeks. The 8 gig version is $299, and we're not super stoked on that. Uh, but the 16 gig version is at an MSRP anyway of $349, with yes, okay, it's only a 128 bit bus card, which used to mean it would be like $130, not $350. Um, but it's, uh, the performance looks pretty darn okay. And uh, AMD is even like decent at, at ray tracing and they've got like all the upscaling technology and all of that. So if you're into that, then you can turn all of that stuff on. I mean, that's pretty neat. Uh, I know a lot of people are really upset that there's even an eight gig version of the card at all, but can I play devil's advocate for a moment here? No. Okay, let's move on. Intel announced the ARC Pro B60. Really? I mean, yeah, you can. You're just not going to let if, me? If you want. No, I mean, look, if that's the dynamic you want to have, I'm okay. I've, I've, uh, you know, we could get some leather. You like and... that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it's going to be one of those kinds of shows today. <laughs> Conveniently, there's a bed right here. <laughs> Poor Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andy, um, I heard that if you do that kind of work, you basically can never find, like, you know, non-pornographic work ever again. Is that going to be a problem for you? Is that a thing? I don't know. Couldn't you just not put it on your resume, or does it, like, get around? I, I mean, I... I, I, I are you see, expecting like, me to see, know? See, like, we might never know. Like, am I maybe maybe to... he's done this kind of work under the table. I was one day only fun creator. Or only, or on top of the table. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the table's got all kinds of surfaces you can get on top of or under. It's true. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Let me play devil's advocate for a moment for yes. the 9060 XT. Yeah. 8 gig. Should we be upset about AMD providing the option for someone to have a crappier GPU at a lower price? The thing that gets me is the lower price is still 300, I'm assuming, American dollars. Yes. And the other thing that also gets me is that AMD just cannot decide what their story is on 8 gig GPUs because, you know, what, uh, whenever they have, a, you know, a VRAM advantage, they're all like, <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> Our competitor <laughs> is... Full of crap, basically. And then, and then when they don't, they're like, oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, then they're like, well, actually, it's fine for 1080p gaming. I went with Sammy to a, a LAN cafe this week, and, like, looking at literally all of the games that everyone was playing. It doesn't matter. It wouldn't matter. However, however, counterpoint, uh, I was supposed to be the devil's advocate, but I guess we're... It still doesn't make reversal. me happy. If I'm spending $300 on a card, I should get 16 gigs of RAM. We're like, into role reversal. Come on. It so, also... <laughs> to play those games... Switch. To play those games that Luke is talking about, right? Yeah. I could also just be using, I don't know, uh, a 5000 series Radeon card. Or, uh, you know, like yeah. a... a re <laughs> realistic... Realistically, well, I could be using like a Polaris card to play League oh, of Legends. Oh yeah, like, who I cares? mean, you might want high frame rate though. Th this is true. This is true. Because a lot of them were playing. C a lot of them were playing CS one point six, which was sick. Really? Yeah. One. There was a mix six? of uh, I guess two, go two or whatever, and then one point six. Shut it was up. So sick. So yeah. like no source. And they they had a they had a LAN version of like 1.6 so they could keep playing. Uh, Intel announced the Arc Pro B60 and B50 workstation cards. They're using their XE2 Battle Mage architecture with wow, thank you, whoever prepared these notes today. Um XE vector engines and XE matrix extensions engines and Okay, none of that is the important thing about Arc Pro. Uh, the important thing about Arc Pro is that we are talking about cards with certified drivers for just a few hundred dollars. B50 is not going to be lighting anyone's world on fire in terms yeah. of its groundbreaking performance, but what it does have is certified 
flipping drivers so that when you're building out, uh, you know, uh, an architectural firm's office and everyone and their flipping dog needs a professional GPU, you can take your little, you know, slimline, uh, you know, Optiplex stations or whatever. You can slap these babies in there. They are, I, I believe they max out at 70 watts, which means that they can work without a PCIe power cable. Uh, they are dual width half height they come with both the half height and full height bracket so you can throw these things into basically any desktop chassis and boom and i was actually i gotta admit <clears throat> when intel put up the slides about compared to last gen i was like y'all had an alchemist pro gpu <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally missed that <laughs> Did anyone care Wait, about that? Wait, did they actually? <laughs> yeah. Apparently. Oh, wow, I had no idea. Yeah, no, I had I had no idea. And um and so I was I was quite surprised because the slide that had all of the companies that they had certified their drivers with was like impressive. I was like, "Yo, SolidWorks, Autodesk, Blender, like y'all y'all got like like really like the big names here oh, yeah. that's really good for a first gen product that it hasn't even launched yet but I guess just like on the gaming side Psych. intel software side for arc has been cooking like the amount of performance they squeezed out of what i think now that battle mage is out intel would probably even admit was a fundamentally flawed architecture in alchemist like they had, they had issues with the, um, I think it was with the internal caching or something that was the reason that um, like you absolutely needed resizable bar or it basically went to crap town in a hurry in terms of performance. I, I forget what the exact technical reason was, but like there were hardware reasons that Alchemist was not very good. Boy, did they ever squeeze a lot of it. And that gives me so much confidence in their commit level because you can release a GPU relatively easily. And I, I say this as a, as, a, as a lay person who could not possibly hope to design and release a GPU. I say this as like compared to a CPU, GPUs are relatively, relatively simple, um, but it's the software. The software will kill you. That's that's the challenge that Intel knew that they were coming up against. It wasn't Especially can we build rate, a parallel processor? The rate at which you need to release stable drivers, right? Because of all these new games coming out and stuff. Like, damn. Here's a question for you. Yeah. Do you think Arc can survive and thrive and continue forward uh, if Tap retires? Let's get to that in a second. First, okay. let's talk about the B60. This is a more performant card. This one, instead of being uh, 70 watts, I believe it's a couple hundred watts. Uh, don't, don't quote me on that though, the watts are not in here. Doesn't matter. The point is, this is meant to be more like uh, a cheap and cheerful um, 24 gig AI capable card that you can have in a slightly higher end workstation slash they have this concept that they were showing off called Battle Matrix and they're doing some, again, down to the software. They're doing some software tomfoolery that's supposed to make it much easier to take a whole pool of these cards, up to eight of them, combine the memory, split up your AI workloads so you can chunk it out and chew on the whole thing in parallel. And you know what? Is the performance gonna be as good as an NVIDIA solution? Be real. Yeah. No, right? But the price- That'd be a lot cheaper. But the price, literally, we are talking about if Intel gets their way, and this comes to market at the pricing that they're targeting, we are talking about like a, a full fat rack mount solution with 192 gigs of usable VRAM, plus you can you know, stack it up with system memory that you can overflow into. We're talking about starting at anywhere from five to $10,000. And they're not giving pricing for B60 Pro, but what they are saying is that that five to $10,000 is for the whole chassis with anywhere from one to eight GPUs. So it's like, okay, I think I can do the math. And, and on the record, but you know, don't quote me on this, right? Sure, um, yeah. They're saying that they think they can do even better 
than the seven hundred dollars or so per GPU that that would that five to ten thousand dollar mark works out to. Like, given time, I mean the hardware, right? The hardware is literally just an Arc B five eighty. Yeah. For the for the B sixty Pro yeah. or for the Pro B sixty, excuse me. So yeah. Nothing should prevent them from doing this for, you know, 500 bucks or whatever. And if the goal is to get an install base out there, which is an assignment that Intel seems to somewhat understand at this point, then that's exactly what you need to do. You make this investment up front in the software ecosystem for developers, and then you make the hardware accessible. If I can get like a whole ass server platform for realistically, not that different a price from like a Mac Studio, <sighs> and like that—that that is a, you know, a decently substantial group of people because there's a lot of like small to medium-sized businesses that want local, like LLMs, uh, inline IDE assistance, stuff like that, um, that are building these solutions. And if you could just do it with art cards, like why not, dude? Speaking of ARC cards and pricing, um, I had a intense conversation um, with a, a very, very, very old uh, old acquaintance of mine, um, Vivian, who is running the discrete GPU. She's a VP and GM, so basically running discrete GPU for Intel ARC, um, where I have to confess, Vivian, if you're watching this, I know you don't watch my show, that's totally fine. But if you're watching this, which you're not, um, I'm sorry I was a little cranky. Um, I got a little bit set off by one of the slides that Intel had in their deck. The whole, the whole thing was about ARC Pro. And, you know, I, I, so I, I, I didn't make the video about this or anything like that. But their ARC Pro deck had one slide right at the beginning, okay, that was like, Arc Battle Mage, so it was about the non-pro, right? Arc Battle Mage, uh, leading performance per dollar, and you know, basically was kind of setting the stage for, let's go non-gamers, we got, we, we're gonna have great performance for, per dollar, just like we do with our gaming cards. Um, and it was like, best performance per dollar, asterisk. Best value for GPUs under $300, which is one hell of an asterisk. Yeah, that's... Uh... Asterisk two, as of November 2024, because, yeah, okay, so, so that was my face. That's um, rough. The November 2024, I suspect, is probably just because that's when they ran the numbers. And they're not going to rerun those numbers for one slide in an ARC Pro presentation. So... I'll also let that a one... fairly convenient time to have ran the numbers. I'll let that one pass. I'll let that one pass. <laughs> But the one it's also been was, a long time since then. The one that I was really upset about was that it said under 300 US dollars. And when I basically was like, hey, so look, I don't want to be that guy, but it's literally my job to press GPU companies on the fact that GPUs cannot be purchased at MSRP. Um, I don't like you guys showing this slide when I can't buy an ARC B580 for under $300. Yeah, and this card shouldn't be able to be on the slide that it's That's on. when the conversation got a little bit intense. And that's at least 93% my fault because I was just, we, we, we got off on the wrong foot a little bit. I really didn't like that. And, the, and then the response was not great. I'm not going to name who said this part because um, it was it was whole group setting. There was like a dozen Intel people in the room. Um, so someone was like, yes, you can. And I was like, OK, show me. And they pulled up like mindfactory.de or something. And I'm like, right. And that's where I got a little I got a little more frustrated. Your slide says US dollars. You don't get to convert euros. Yeah. To US dollars yeah. and tell me I can buy an ARC B580 for under 300 US dollars. That, sir, is actually bullshit. That's whack. Yeah, You're I not like allowed that. to do that. Yeah. Um, and so what I basically said to them is, look, what I need 
is I don't need you to fix it right now. I don't need you to call up Newegg, who is in the middle of the night now, and tell them to, 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 to fix their pricing. But what I need is a coherent strategy that Intel will be employing to ensure that ARC B580s will be available at MSRP in the US, in US dollars. And then I got more intense because basically, and I'm not going to name sort of names, but people started to kind of pipe up and go, well, you know, we can't control what our board partners do in terms of pricing and what retailers do in terms of pricing. And I basically was like, I'm gonna let you finish, but I worked in the channel. Do not tell me that. You absolutely have levers. You absolutely do. Whether or not you choose to pull them, that is your choice, but you have levers. You have levers in terms of production. If Arizona iced tea can do it. You have levers in terms of production. You have levers in terms of allocation of parts. You have levers in terms of the marketing funding that you provide to your partners, both manufacturing partners and retail partners. You have levers in terms of the fact that you have a founder's edition. You have your limited edition cards that have an Intel label on them that you could literally control the pricing on that only exist so that you can put pressure on other board partners to fall in line in terms of pricing. Everybody knows that's why Founders Edition exists, right? You, I just listed, and that's not even all of the levers. I listed many levers that you have to manage channel pricing. It's not legal in every market, but there is, um, actually, okay, that typically goes the other way, but there's, there's things like map pricing where you have a minimum advertised price um, it, that can be considered price fixing depending on the market. I'm just saying, <laughs> illegal or not, many brands attempt to do it. Um, so, so there are levers. There are levers to pull. And after things got a little intense for a little bit, I got a firm commitment that Intel would come to me with a strategy where they were going to get pricing to MSRP. And I didn't, I didn't even ask for like $249.99. I was like, look, I get it. This one has three fans on it. It's two sixty nine ninety nine. Okay. You know, okay. This is an OC. Sure. You know, whatever. Product variants, whatever. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. There's, there's, there's a, more than a decade of precedent for, hey, this one is a little more, this is one's a little more fixy fixy. Um, you know, we, we did some extra special stuff with the VRMs. No problem with that. Um, but if you're going to say, and this is, this is where the sticking point is, if you're going to say this GPU costs this much, and you're going to ask me to say this GPU costs this much, don't make me a liar. Yeah. I don't like that. 